So the first thing we're doing um, for pre-calc 8 to day 2 is we're finishing up the second problem that we started yesterday. It's just completing the square. Now remember the rules, the steps. It's kind of a nice little dance, but it's always the same. When we're completing the square, we're talking about a perfect square um, binomial. But we've got to have my leading coefficient be a 1. Okay, in order to do that, i got to factor out the 25. So I got x squared minus 2x plus something is equal to 8, at least to begin. And the reason why I'm doing that something is I'm going to be completing the square. I'm going to be introducing something. And part of that introduction is I'm going to be putting that same something on the other side because I don't want to change the value of the original relationship. So whatever I add, I do to both sides. So in you know the wash, it just be zero I'm adding. Okay, I could add 100 to both sides, but if I subtract 100 from one side to the other, it's zero. So after I do the factoring out of 25, I take half of the b value and square it. So that becomes one. So I'm going to add one to both sides. Okay, or really, is it one? Wouldn't that be 25 times one? So it should be 25. Okay, make sure you pay attention to that. That's the first thing. Then after I get that done, I already know that I've got 25 times x minus 1 equal um, 33. And I can finish out my problem. Oh, get squared. Thank you, sir. But I can finish out my problem as I'm going here. I got 33 25 and I can take the square root of that. So I've got x minus 1 equals this plus or minus square root of 33 fifths. And then I add my 1, x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 33 fifths. As I step through that to find my answer when I'm doing that in, in lieu of doing the quadratic formula. But the completing the square steps we're going to do for our ellipses is really right here. That's where it's going to stop so we can set up the general form of the equation. So with that said, let's get on to the, the start of today's notes. Prove that the graph of the equation is an ellipse and find its ver uh, vertices and foci. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I first must group everything. So I've got 9x squared minus 36x. And I've got uh, plus 25y squared plus 50y, and I'll put equal to 164 on the other side. Okay? I hope that these look familiar because I used the same one separately yesterday and today just to practice. Dividing out a 9 in this first part of the term, 9 times x squared minus 4x. If I'm going to complete the square, I'm going to add something there. Dividing out the 25 y squared, um, that should have been a 50, not a 5. But then I've got plus 2y plus something, and I'm going to have this equal 164. And as I do this, slide that over a little bit to make myself some room. And I'm going to add two things in here. And the reason being is I got one here, and I'll have one from here that I'm going to be adding in. Okay, does it make sense what I'm about to do? Yeah. Algebraically, why doesn't it like screw everything up to split up one term into multiple terms like that? Well, I mean, I use the algebra to put them all together like that in order of operations, you know, for multiplying, and then I just decided to or put them in descending order. I'm just breaking them apart uh, where the x, you know, the x's and the y's are together to find the original factors. My final answer should I should be able to, you know, factor it out or you know, multiply it all out and come up with the original if I put it in the descending order the way it started. Okay. So when we're doing this, again, half of negative four is negative two squared is four. Okay. But remember, I'm adding 36 here, so bless you. I'm going to add 36 over here. Because that's 4 times 9, 36. 
And in the same fashion, here, I got 25, but that's half of 2 squared. You know, 1 squared is 1. But I'm adding 25. Okay? Are there any questions about what I'm doing there because of that spot? Now I've got 9x minus 2, quantity squared, plus 25, y plus 1, quantity squared, equal 164, 36 is 50, 61, 225. Okay. Now all I'm going to do, remember, the standard form of an ellipse has my x, you know, quantity with x squared over something plus my quantity with y squared over something equal to 1. So I'm going to divide by 225 all the way across. Which incidentally conveniently becomes... What's 20, how many times does 25 go on the 225? Uh, nine? Yep. I got nine quarters and $2.25. Okay. So it's that same process. Remember, now we, we got this. We completed the square. There should be some nice, neat numbers, we hope, as it sets out. Because now my A, this is the largest one, so my A is 5. My B is 3. You okay where I got A and B? Because keep in mind, as we put it down here, I got 3 squared and I got 5 squared. And that's where my A and B come from. So, and if you were great with your Pythagorean triples, your C should be a 4, right? But let's just double check. As we go through, because remember it's a squared equals b squared plus c squared because of the relationship inside the ellipse. And we have uh, 5 squared equal 3 squared plus c squared. So c is really going to become 4. Okay? And because they're asking about the foci and they're also asking about the vertices. Okay? Are there any questions about what I've done so far? Now, part of the practice for this is once you have the right answer for something, just make sure that you're comfortable in doing it by doing it over, okay? And you'll become a little bit, you know, better versed with it. And then when you do it with a problem for the first time, um, you'll have a little bit more of an understanding of how to do it. Um, my next thing, after I get that, remember the vertices was a, you know, my a is 5, so I'm going to plus or minus a, but a is with x. So my uh, center is 2, negative 1, okay? My foci was one of the things I was supposed to find, and everything's with x, so it's 2 plus or minus 4, negative 1. So I've got uh, negative 2, negative 1, and 6, negative 1 is my foci. And my vertices are with, a, with my a, is uh, 2 plus or minus 5. And again, that's all because A is with X. Okay? If A was with Y, I'd be doing the Y stuff. And A is the largest value, and that's what determines it. So my vertices are uh, negative 3, negative 1, and uh, positive 7, negative Got this, my equation in standard form, and somebody dropped the 1 over here, so you got to put that back in. But that's really what I'm looking for for the answer. They talk about prove that the graph of the equation is an ellipse and find its vertices and foci. I proved that it's an ellipse because it's in the standard form for ellipse, and I found the center, foci, and vertices. Questions regarding? All because of completing the square. 
Now, the reflective property of an ellipse. Because of their shape, ellipses are used to make reflectors of sound, light, and other waves. If we rotate an ellipse in three-dimensional space about its focal axis, the ellipse sweeps out an ellipsoid of revolution. If we place a signal source at one focus of a uh, reflective ellipsoid, the signal reflects off the elliptical surface to the other focus, as illustrated here in figure 820. Okay. This property is used to make mirrors for optical equipment and to study aircraft noises and wind tunnels. Okay. Now, in architecture, ceilings in the shape of an ellipsoid are used to create whispering galleries. Okay. So if you are standing at the foci, you can whisper. And person standing on the far side of the room at the other foci would hear you quite, queerly, quite clearly. A person whispering at one focus can be heard across the room by a person at the other. An ellipsoid is part of the design of the Texas State Capitol. A hand clap made in the center of the main vestibule at one focus of the ellipsoid bounces off the elliptical dome, passes through the other focus, bounces off the dome a second time, and returns the person as a distinct echo. Okay, and that's where you get that echo effect in some of those rooms. Um, but this is used, gosh, that should not have gone there. Uh, but this is used in different areas. But the first thing I want you to do is on this problem, if the ellipse of the White House is 616 feet long and 528 feet wide, okay, and what is its equation? If that's the major axis length and minor axis length. Can you just come up with the equation? And when we do these, make the assumption that the vertex is at 0, 0. Makes your life easier. OK? Does that make sense so far? You guys are on. You're coming up with the equation. No, I'm just going to let it roll. It'll go quick. You guys will figure it out quite quickly. Remember, A is the semi-major axis. B is the semi-minor. And the semi means that you cut it in half. I'm just going to give you a pass. This is what I do. Your major, your major axis is 2a, which is 616. You have a minor axis here, which is 528. But that's your 2b. Okay, so you're given those pieces of information. Your semi-major is A, your semi-minor is B. So when you cut those in half, you've got uh, 250, 264, and you have 308. Okay, so we have found A and B, and all we are asked to do is find its equation. So if we use 0, 0 as our simplistic you know, center of our ellipse, we now know that A would have to go with X, and that's 308 squared. B would have to go with Y, and that's 264 squared. And we have a 1, and that is our equation in standard form of the ellipse located on the White House lawn. Assuming we oriented our equation one way or another. But what if I saw it as this the way it was in the picture, and this was my y, and this was my x. Because if I didn't have that picture, and I just did this, I would do that in standard form. But that's assuming my major axis was horizontal. And depending on my orientation, and I'm hoping that that's a north-facing lawn, we would have to switch this around based on that picture this way. So the 
minor axis is the horizontal and the major axis is vertical, okay? But without the picture, I would expect either one. Does that make sense? And we had to make sure that we recognize the orientation of the picture. Are there any questions about what the major axis would be? And this would be major axis horizontal. This would be major axis vertical. And that would fit this picture. So if it was based on that picture, I wouldn't do it this way. Okay? Uh, yeah. If it was based on that picture, I wouldn't do it this way. I'd do it the, that second one. Yep. Is yours different, differently yeah, rotated? Is... Yeah, see? So because of this, it would be that. Yeah, you'd use the blue one. Okay, does that make sense based on the orientation of your picture? So it's all about orientation of what we what we're able to read. Is that okay? Now, um, the next thing: the use of ellipsoids are used in healthcare to avoid surgery and the treatment of kidney stones. An elliptical lithotripter uh, emits underwater ultrafrequency uh, uh, shock waves from one focus with the patient's kidney carefully placed, and they figure that out with a ultrasound, and they kind of pos position the uh, person in there. Um, and then they can increase it or decrease it as strong as they need. And with the ultrasound, uh, they can tell whether they busted up the stones or not, so they don't have to go in um, you know, to take off the stones if, it's that, if they're that big. But it's kind of a neat application of this because what, the, what they do, they have a, the shock waves come in and the person's kidney is located at the other focus and they just treat that as, as kind of a big old uh, jackhammer, you know, with the ultrasonic waves as you go through. And they have to be careful too because, you know, you could be bruised on the inside there too. They want to do it enough that... It breaks up the stone, but not so much that you know, you'll have in, sort of internal damage as well. So focusing a lithotripter, lithotripper, uh, the ellipse used to generate the ellipsoid of a lithotripper has a major axis of 12 feet, major axis of 12, and a minor axis of 5. How far from the center are the foci? So I'm asking you to find C. But in order to do that, you've got to find A and B. Okay. And part of this, if you would, you don't have to do that, do this to find C, but I would like you to actually write the equation. Okay. And assuming that A is with X on this. So I've got a major axis of 6. I've got a minor axis of 2.5. I actually showed how I know why. Okay. If I was going to just write the equation based on that information, and again, the idea of this, the machine has a 0, 0 from its center. Okay. So we're looking at an x squared, 6 squared, plus y squared, 2.5 squared, equal 1. That's my equation. But that doesn't help us with C, finding the foci. Okay. And the foci can be found because we have that relationship of a squared equals b squared plus c squared, and a is 6, 
B is 2.5. So I've got 36 equal, what is that? 6.25 plus C squared. Okay. And I subtract the 6, so I got 29.75. And that's subtract C squared by subtract 6.25. And I get 29.75. Well, that's going to be a little bit more than 5. It ends up being like uh, 5.454 uh, as I take the square root of it. Okay. So they're asking how far from the center of the foci. Foci are 5.454 feet from center when I finish. Okay. Knowing that allows you to position your patient and be able to get, get their stones in the right spot so you can just you know, give them a blast and break them up. Are there any questions on how to or what for on this? All right. Well, we've got that. That's the end of today. I just want to make sure that if you're, oh, we forgot about the extra example. I'm sorry about that. I want to make sure that we get this one too. A moon travels about the Earth in elliptical orbit with the Earth at one focus. Okay, so the Earth is at a focus. This is one focus. The major axis has length 768,806 kilometers, and the minor axis length is 767,746 kilometers. Find the greatest and least distances from the Earth's center to the moon's center. Greatest and least distances. Let's keep in mind where this is located, where this might be located. This is a hint, 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 hint. I want you to think about that. I'm going to turn this off for a second. It should take about the next four minutes. Okay, so I have a major axis length. of uh, 2A, 768806. So my A becomes 384403, and that's kilometers. My minor axis length um, is, I was making sure I grabbed the right one, uh, 763, 2B, 767, 746, and my minor axis was um, yep, 38 after I divide. I've got 383, 873 kilometers. Okay, as we step through. <laughs> oh, you guys are so cute. Okay, so I'm still looking at a squared <laughs> equal b squared plus c squared. Okay, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking at that, and I'm going to put these in. So I got 384403 squared equal 383873 squared, and I get my c squared. Are you okay with that? Once I get there, I can actually find the difference and find my, that my c is going to be um, about... This is kilometers. That's about what my C is going to be, okay, after I find the uh, square root of that. But now here's the thing that I've got to be careful about. I have my Earth is, Earth is located at the foci, which is C away from the origin. So the closest it could be is A minus C. The furthest it could be is A plus C as I'm looking through as they go around the orbit. Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm really talking about my proximity. A minus C is closest. Okay. So I've got 384403. There aren't three fours there, just the two. Okay. And so that's going to be 364,000. 224 kilometers. That's my closest value. My furthest value is my A value plus the distance C is away, you know, because it's on the far side. 
and I've got um, 384403 plus 20179. So that combination is 582 kilometers. So these are the two values we're looking for for the closest and furthest they could be away. Distractions. Um, I, I wish I could actually show that on tape. <laughs> okay. Um, I hope this is going all right with the application side of things. Please make sure your ellipse are very, very clearly understood because when we get the hyperbola, a couple of the equations look similar, but they change. And it's no longer, when we talk about hyperbolas, that the largest number going with a certain letter. So we have to pay attention to what's happening with them as we go, okay? All right. Hope your things are going well, and things will go well for you.